Mr. Teru, here to cover a topic that in AP Stats a lot of teachers have said, not a lot, but I've definitely heard some teachers say that they skip. Um, because, well, I don't think they believe that it really shows up on the AP exam very much. I don't, I've never been a grader. Uh, I know it's on our topic list, and so I'm going to go ahead and cover it, but I'm going to do sort of like a simplified version of the log transformation, uh, much simpler than our new versions of our textbooks make this seem. So, I'm not going to totally skip log transformations, but I am going to kind of water it down a little bit and just talk about two types of transformations. This video will only include one of them, and the second one will be for the other. Okay, so log transformations, what are they? Well, before we get into all this, we're going to re need to remember that with scatter plots and regression lines, that's the only type of regressions that we can do, uh, linear regression lines. If that scatter plot is not approximately linear, uh, well, we're going to be stuck doing nothing more than just describing what we see. So, let's uh, what we're going to do with log transformations is attempt to take a scatter plot that is curved, whether it's curved up or down, maybe it's exponential decay, and try and make these patterns straight. And uh, we'll be able to do that with two types of variables with a log transformation. Now, we've learned two types. This will be the second type of transformation we've learned so far. Uh, we've had a linear transformation, which is when you just uh, find some new x values by going through the process of a plus bx. And all that does is change the units of measure. Like maybe if you want to take um, an e a variable on the x-axis and change it from e uh, inches to feet or Celsius to Fahrenheit, that's a linear transformation. So is the z-score process. The z-score formula, where you subtract and divide, that's the same as adding by a negative number and multiplying by a fraction. A z-score is a linear transformation, where you're changing the units of measure from whatever's in the problem into numbers of z-scores away from or standard deviations away from the mean. So a linear transformation um, will change the unit of measure like inches to feet like I just said, but it will not change the shape of the distribution. If you're talking about a histogram that's maybe left skewed, if you go from inches to feet, then it's still going to be a left skewed distribution. It will move left and right on the number line and expand and contract possibly if there's a multiplication uh, like is in the form of B, but it, if it's left skewed, it'll still be left skewed. If it's right skewed, it'll still be left, uh, right skewed. Um, and if we're talking about a scatter plot, here we have two time plots, or at least an idea of them, where the time is the x-axis and the vertical axis is in some form of temperature. Well, if I have a graph, a scatter plot that shows sort of like this downward, well, it's actually a positive slope, but this sort of downward concave uh, idea then, and that's rich, that's uh, measured in Celsius. Well, okay, if I take the Celsius though and put it through a linear transformation to change it into Fahrenheit, well, my graph is going to change a little bit. Maybe the wider self will become larger, um, and, but it's still going to have this sort of downward slope. Um, so, it appears to change a little bit, but it's still going to have a curved pattern in it. Uh, so this is what the effects of a linear transformation is. But what we're going to do is a log transformation, and we're going to be, we're going to be able to take two types of curved data, exponential and power, and through a log transformation process, get a new transform scatter plot that is straight, and that will allow us to run regression lines through it and do other calculations. Okay, so, how was that right in the microphone? Type 1, exponential growth and decay. If you make a scatter plot and you notice that the pattern is curved, now, we're talking about exponential growth and decay. So if my y value is getting larger with my larger x's, of course, that's going to be exponential growth. Well, I don't really care if my students can look at a graph and tell if it's square or cubic or cube root. Uh, I just am concerned with them identifying the two types of variables that we can make straight, exponential and power. And again, today, or in this video, we're only going to do exponential. If you take the log of the y values and remake the scatter plot, if it looks to be straight, and you can verify that by making a regression line, and then checking it with a residual plot, if you have curved data, you log the y's, just the y's, 
and you get a linear pattern, then you have just proven or shown yourself that that original data was exponential or growth or decay. Um, so if logging the y makes a scatter plot straight, and I put this in quotation marks because we are dealing with real data, and the idea of perfectly straight is just not going to happen, then the original data was exponential. Now my notes are in the form of using 83s and 84s, which, what my, which is what my students use. I will show you an example on the calculator, uh, probably get that posted tomorrow, about doing these transformations with both a TI Inspire and a um, TI 84. In a TI 84 notation, you're going to have your X's and Y's. They don't have to be list one and list two, but that's just convenient. And then in list three, we're going to take the log of the Y values, which I have identified in list two. So list three equals log of list two. We have the log of Y values. So this scatter plot will be made by using list one and list two and this scatter plot with list one and list three. And again, curve data, log the y's. If you notice it looks straight, you will run a regression line through that transform data and then verify that it's straight by making a residual plot. I have a video showing you how to make a residual plot and I'll also be making more of these on my calculator lab demonstrating log transformations if you're not sure how to do that. So if you can verify that that scatter plot is straight, then you have verified that the original data was exponential growth or decay. And don't forget, when you take that equation out of your calculator, you did log the y values before you made it straight or to make it straight. So don't forget to write log of y hat, not just y hat. Continuing on. No, 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 no. Okay, so we made our scatter plot. It looked curved. We logged the y's. It looked straight. We ran the regression line. We made sure that it was straight using that residual plot and seeing the horizontal band of points, so no clear curved pattern in the residual plot. Then if L1 and L3 appears linear, make a regression line, then a residual plot. I'm just writing down what I just told you a second ago to do and prove or show yourself that the log of y hat equals a plus bx is a good fit for that transformed data. Well, you know what? A lot of people don't understand logarithms, and you might not as well. I'll show you a little review here in a second. But if you're a statistician and you start you know, giving people your results and they're in this transformed idea values that they don't understand, it's going to mean nothing to them. So we're going to talk about undoing the log, getting the log function out of our equation that fits the transformed linear scatter plot. So to undo a log transformation, make an equation that models, you know, we're going to undo the log transformation to make an equation that models the original data. Something that somebody, you know, that maybe if you're a statistician, someone probably gave you data to analyze and you're giving them something back. Um, and you want to make something friendly for them to use. So we want to make a model that fits the original um, data, and we're going to do that by making both sides of the equation an exponent of 10, and I'll explain why at the end of this video you'd want to do that. So let's get the log out of our equation that fits our linear transformed data. Let's make a model that fits the original graph. No, 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 no. Okay, enough of the sound effects. So, anywho, we've got an equation that is the log of y hat equals a plus bx. And again, these are just notes. An example will follow in a calculator lab. So, we've got the original curve data. We logged the y's and it looked straight. We ran the regression line through it and then checked with a residual plot that regression line showed the, original, the transformed data was indeed linear verifying the original data was exponential. And you're stuck with this equation that does fit well the transformed data. Okay, so we're going to make both sides of the equation an exponent of 10. Why? Because I want to undo that log base 10. And when you have a base 10 and a log base 10 stacked like this, they are going to cancel each other out. I'll show you how that works in a second. 
So the log base 10 and the base 10 cancel out, y hat comes down, and now your log is out of the function. On the right hand side, I'm going to make this look like the exponential form that you'll find in your textbook. This is 10 raised to two terms being added together. Well, when do you add exponents? You add exponents when you're multiplying like bases. Okay, so that means that 10 to the a plus b x is the same as 10 to the a times 10 to the bx. Remember, when you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. Great. Well, now, we got this, and 10 to the a, you'll actually have a number out of your calculator, so you can find out what this actually equals. So you have some number times 10 to something. This pattern, you might notice, will fit what you see in your textbook, and your textbook might use different letters, but exponential form is equal to y hat equals c, this is our initial value, times d to the x. And d is going to be our base, is going to be our growth pattern. How much are we growing every um, growth period? If d is larger than 1, it's a growth. If d is less than 1, it's a decay. And then we have an exponent. Well, the exponent x is the number of growth periods. So y hat equals c times d to the x. Your book might have exponential form written like this, but with different letters. But this is a textbook version of exponential growth. And out of your calculator, you're going to see you know, base 10s, because that's what we're using, um, base 10 or exponents of 10 to get rid of the log function. And why exactly is that canceling out all the time? Well, take... Excuse the interruption, Ms. Rook, to your uh, room, please. Could you please go to your room, Ms. Rook? Thank you. So why are these canceling out like this? Why do we um, get this base 10 and log base 10 to cancel out? Well, take your calculator and do the log of 100. If you do that, you'll get an answer of 2. And why is that? because the base of the logarithm is base 10. And the answer that you get is an exponent of 10. So if you want to take the log of 10, you get 2. You can check with your calculator. It's very simple. And just as an example, take 10 and raise it to the second power. Doesn't that equal 100 again? So I logged 100, I got 2. And if I take 10 and I raise it to a power of 2, I get back to 100. So making a value, an exponent of 10, the answer from a log, making it an exponent of 10, will cancel out the log function and get you right back to where you started from. So this example will show you why you want to make both sides of your exponent an ex, uh, equation, an exponent of 10, because those will cancel out, and you'll get, a mod, you'll get an equation that models your original data that someone who's not a statistician or mathematician can plug numbers into and understand what's going on. Bye.